This is the video in which I'm going to finish off and bottle and taste my methaglin, which is a form of mead. It's a honey wine flavoured with herbs, in this case dandelions. If you haven't seen part one of this video, which is the making and the preparation and so on, it's going to be linked in the card in the corner of the screen here if you're on the card enabled platform. If not, it'll be down in the video description. So just a quick recap, this is wine made from honey and water with an infusion of dandelions and fermented for months in fact, and I've just finished it today. There is one original video where I started making this and there's been a couple of updates I think on just progress in random videos. It'll all be linked down below. Let's have a look at the bottling process and then we'll come back for a little taste. Right, my dandelion methaglin is very clear now and it's more or less stopped fermenting. Every now and again we still do get a little bubble but I think that's coming from the sediment rather than the brew. I'm now going to decant this off into a clean container and try and get it in bottles. I've got to try to do that without getting any of this sediment. I've sterilised a bunch of bottles and I've sterilised another damage on so I'm going to siphon it into another demijohn first and then decant it from that into the bottles just so I don't have to manage the loose end of the siphon hose as I'm managing the sediment at this end. So that's the plan. Bottles are already sterilised. I'll show you what that looks like on screen but it was just a case of st they don't need to be as sterile as they would be if we were brewing because contamination now will probably be dealt with by the alcohol content of the mead so really we're talking about cleanliness more than sterilization at this point. Anyway, got to get this into an elevated position somewhere where I can siphon off the contents. So very quickly this is the setup. I've got my clean damage on down there on the floor on a tray in case of accidental spillage and then I've got the full one up here. I had to carry it ever so carefully to that position. I don't think I've disturbed the sediment. There's a filter thing that goes on the end of the siphon hose I've just tested that on the other damage on and it doesn't go in but I think this one's a slightly wider neck so maybe we'll be lucky. So I'm going to move the camera back because once I get going on this I won't be fiddling with the camera. Just to keep things relatively simple I'm actually going to tape this end of the siphon hose into the receiving bottle just so I don't have to manage too many different things coming apart on me. This is really just to stop it popping out while I'm fiddling with the other end of the hose. That's good. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Okay, same thing up this end. I'll put that filtration thing on there. I've got a piece of tape ready. And this is the bit that's probably more critical because what I need to do is get this hose down into there and then tape it off at a point where it's above the sediment but not so far above the sediment that it's going to run dry. So it could be tricky. Let's have a sniff. Oh, it smells really good. Wow, that could not be any tighter a fit in there. Okay, I think I'm clear of the sediment at that point. Okay, probably going to be some waste here, but we'll do what we can. Gravity is hopefully going to take care of everything else. Now this will aerate it a little bit, which could mean it starts fermenting again. I've got lemonade bottles, so hopefully we'll be all right. We might actually end up with a bit of natural sparkle in it. And I would rather waste a bit of this and not get the sediment in the bottom than try to get too much of this and end up having to filter it again or anything like that. What we've got coming through at the moment is really lovely and clear and I think we'll just keep it that way. Okay, I'm going to stop there because that was sagging down into the sediment. Right, let's see what we've got. So that's the lees and that's the brew. I think I was successful in excluding all of the sediment. Yeah, it looks really good. I guess some people probably would like me to make Marmite out of this yeast sludge here, but I'm not going to do that this time. Mainly because this has got all of the gunge from the dandelions in it. So, yeah, not going to use that. However, this now has to go into bottles. These will actually stand a fair bit of pressure. These are for making uh, naturally carbonated drinks. 
You can allow a little bit of secondary fermentation in these bottles without them exploding, and that will drive some gas into solution, which will give us a fizzy drink. If there's anything left to ferment in there. We could force that by putting a spoonful of sugar in each bottle, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Well, maybe I'll do that with one. So this first bottle, which I will label separately, I'm just gonna put one teaspoonful of granulated sugar in there to encourage a bit of secondary fermentation. There we go, just label that bottle like that for the moment so I don't have to do the whole vinegar leg thing. Right, siphon tube into the bottle again, and this time we can go right down to the bottom so I can be a bit bolder. I'll take that in place again. And just to encourage that to come out of that side of the jar, I'm just gonna prop up the other side of the demijohn just with a stick. righty go. Okay, siphoning time. And I'll be filling these bottles up to hopefully a, a roundabout there. We well, might as well put the caps on these as soon as we can. Well, we might get a full fourth bottle. I don't think we're going to get five bottles. I think actually we're going to end up with a glass full at the end. So I will, while that's filling, I'm going to get a drinking glass because the rest of it's going to go in there if there is any rest of it. Well, how about that for perfection of volume? We've got four bottles and a glass that I can taste now. Okay, so there we go. Four bottles of methaglin of herbal mead, honey wine. Not bad, and I'm happy with the way that came out. And all of our fears about it being horribly green from the dandelions were unrealized. However, what does it taste like? And I literally haven't tasted this yet. This is my first sip, so let's have a sniff. It smells like a, well, it smells like cider, but it also smells like honey, so not surprisingly. Okay, tasting time. Still quite sweet noticeably alcoholic yeah it's good that's really good it, it's got that warming effect that you get from a fortified wine so i would say that's probably quite strong i've no means of measuring the alcohol and there is a, a herbal leafy dandelion flavor there slightly resinous actually slightly like freshly cut pine or something like pine needles I'm drinking this at room temperature, which is probably not ideal. And it's quite a warm day today. So what I might do is just put a lid on that glass and put that in the fridge and just chill it down a tiny bit and then we'll taste it again. These four bottles I will place in the garage and there definitely is some sugar left to ferment in there. So I'm expecting that these will probably all go sparkling, but especially the one that's got the sugar in it. That's really good. I'm really, really impressed with that. I'm really happy with that result. It's not as dry as I thought it was gonna be. It's actually still got quite a lot of sweetness from the honey, um, but it's really tasty. So tasting time when it's chilled. Now it's been chilled down for about half an hour in the fridge and it's not chilled like white wine would be. This is kind of cellar temperature for beer really. Nice and cool, but not ice cold. Mm. So like that, it's like, a, it's like a dessert wine. It's like a white dessert wine. It's really quite sweet. It's got very, very little acidity, actually. It's got a light, nice little touch of bitterness from the dandelions, but it's not overpowering. And you can absolutely taste the aroma of the flowers and the honey that are in there, but you can also taste that it's been fermented, if that makes sense. It's got a kind of cidery flavor to it. I think this is a drink for cellar temperature or to be served at room temperature with maybe an ice cube or two in it just to chill it down a bit. I think if it's chilled down ice cold, you'll lose the aroma of those flowers, probably. But there you go, I'm calling that a success because that's really delicious. I only got four bottles out of it, but that's good enough for me. These bottles here may ferment a bit further because this is still quite sweet and we have agitated it, although most of the yeast is gone. But we may find that we get some secondary fermentation from traces of yeast that are still in suspension, in which case these bottles will turn drier and they will get a bit of a sparkle to them as well as the gas 
as the CO2 produced by the yeast goes into solution. So especially this one, which we've actually dosed with a little bit of sugar, which I think turns out not to have been necessary, but never mind. As I say, I don't have the means to measure the alcohol content in here scientifically, so I'm going to do it unscientifically. What I'll do is I'll drink the rest of this glass and I'll give you my kind of subjective view on screen of what I think the alcohol content probably is based on the physiological effects of alcohol, which I'm somewhat familiar with. So I hope that's been interesting to watch. I've certainly enjoyed doing this and I'm so glad that this has been the success that it has been. So cheers, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.